Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Okay, we have a number of stages for this one. So I'm going to crack on as quickly as I can. First up, I've got uh, my object loaded. I've got viewport shading enabled and I'm in the shading tab. And I have a principled shader setup already applied. Uh, as before, I've got my cloth um, setup that I shared in a previous video um, already set up here as well. So the first thing that I'm going to do is actually make a couple of changes to the principled shader. I'm going to drop the specular so the cloth is not glossy and I'm going to increase the roughness to 0.75 and I'm going to increase the transmission to 0.325 that will allow some of the light to pass through the cloth um, because basically what we're doing is simulating a printed polka dot fabric so you wouldn't get the intensity of the color on one side but by increasing the transmission you will get um, some of the patterning showing through but in a more pastel way um, i'm also going to increase the transmission roughness to 0.5 Okay, so let's take a look at creating the polka dot itself. For this, we will need a gradient texture. So shift A and then search for and apply the gradient texture. And we'll also need a color ramp. So we'll plug the color ramp into the base color and the color from the gradient texture into the factor. Set the gradient texture to spherical set the interpolation mode on the color ramp to constant and move the white color value to 0.65. Now the white color is actually going to be the dot color and the black is going to be the fabric color as you can already see. You won't see the polka dots just yet because we've got a few more bits to do but uh, what I will do is select both of those Press the N key to open the panel on the side. And because I have the Node Wrangler um, add-on enabled, I've got these options down here. If you don't have that enabled, of course, you can go into your preferences, go into add-ons and search for Node, oops, Node Wrangler and make sure that's enabled. Uh, I'm then going to click on frame selected and that will add a frame here. Go up to where it says node, uncheck color, and then give it a name. So let's call this one polka dot. Uh, actually, let's call this polka dot. No, because we will control the size and the color here, but I'll come back to that in a wee bit. Let's move that off to one side. Press the end key to get rid of that again so we can just see the tail of this. Let's now look at the scale of the dots. So we're going to need a texture coordinate and we're going to need a mapping node. So the UV coordinates go into the vector of the mapping node and the vector from this, I'm going to plug directly in here, but we've got a lot to put in between. So you can see it's rubbish right now. But that's fine. We're going to do some changes. We're going to change the scale to 200 on the X and the Y. Again, you won't see much going on here yet because we've still got lots to do. We're going to move this way off to the left. And we're going to apply a frame to that as well. And we'll call this one Scale. Right, so you can see there's a lot of space, so we've got to fill that in. Right, let's take a look at the tiling. Let's just disconnect for that for now. So for the tiling, we'll just use a blank space. But we're first going to need a separate XYZ node and a combine 
XYZ node. Now the Z's got not going to make too much of a difference, so we're just going to plug one to the other. Next up, you're going to add 10 math nodes. So I'll select one and then just duplicate the others. We'll make the changes in a second. So five at the top and then I'll just select all of these D and pop those down the bottom. <coughs> okay, we're going to take the X from the separate XYZ node into the top value socket of this add. We're then going to take connect that up to the next one and change that to absolute. Connect that up to the next one and change that to modulo. Connect that up to oops. Connect that. Oh, get off. Connect that. Come on. Up to the next one and choose subtract. Don't worry about these values, we're gonna come back to those in a second. Connect that up to the next one. And again, change this to absolute. Now plug that into the X value. Now for the bottom row, uh, we're going to do exactly the same in fact. So I'll get rid of those ones and I'll just duplicate these now that I've already changed them. Take the Y value and plug it into the add on the bottom row. and then take the value from the end and plug it into the Y. Now we're going to select all of these and we're going to apply a frame. And we'll call this tiling. This is controlling how the polka dots tile basically. But we've got some um, values that we need to connect up. So we're going to do a bit of clever maths because the same values are used a lot. So we'll get, grab ourselves a value node and a math node. Set this to multiply and connect this value to the top value and set the bottom as Two. Set the value at 2 here. And then basically, I'm going to take this value node and plug it into the two add math nodes here. And also the two subtract nodes. Then we're going to take this multiply node and plug that into the two modulo nodes. And this value is basically going to control the spacing of the dots. So again, we'll give it a frame and call it spacing. Organizing things with these frames with the titles is going to make much more sense later on because you can know which bits you need to change for either the colors, the tiling, the spacing or the scale. So that now needs to get plugged into the tiling. Okay. Now, just a correction, I'm not going to plug that in here because we need to put something else in between. So, oh, what's happened here? For some reason that stopped being in viewport shading mode. Anyway, let's crack on. 
So now we need to add the staggering offset. Otherwise, we'd have a grid of dots like this. We need to stagger it so that we get dots in the middle. So for this, we're again going to need a separate XYZ node and a combine, oops, combine XYZ node. Can't type. Connect up the Z because we don't really need that. And then we're going to need four math nodes. Okay. Connect the X into the first slot on this add. Change the next to multiply and the next to round. Where's that gone? Over there. And the final one levers add. Connect those all up. And connect this to the Y value. Take the X value across into the X value here and take the y value from this up to the add there. Leave that set as is and change this value to 4. Okay. So again, let's put a frame on this. And let's move it into place. So now we should be able to connect all of this up. So the scale goes into the staggering. Staggering goes into tiling. And tiling goes into our polka dot. And there we now have our polka dot fabric. Now let's just move these a little bit closer. Oops. So we can technically ignore all of this on the left just while we take a look at this final bit. So like I said, basically the white value, the right hand value controls the color of the dots and the left hand color value controls the color of the fabric. So let's give ourselves quite a traditional red and white polka dot. And that's basically your polka dot fabric created. So let's render that out and see how it goes. Okay, and there we go, rendered out at 512 samples, I think. I'll have to go back and check, um, using the Cycles Render Engine. But I think it's pretty awesome. If you've enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Uh, yes, it was 512. And um, of course, subscribe for future content. In the meantime, thanks for watching.